imagine being part of that team in 2001. What do you remember about those few months? Um, you know, and the, and the status, the attitude of the team afterwards. Well, I remember going to, I remember practicing it. I think I was spotting for Michael, or at least talking with Michael. He had his own crew chief and all, and they were doing well. And Michael came on the radio and said, I just found something. At Daytona? I mean, you, you know, but he did. And to this day, Michael's a fantastic plate racer. And I thought, well, okay, so we went out there and, and won the race. And, I mean, super excited for people like Buffy and all these guys yeah. that had worked so hard. Oh, you know, yeah. And Ron, Ron yeah. Hornaday was an absolute stud race car driver, and Michael had to go in there and take his place. And why did Michael take his place? Because Earnhardt liked him. I mean, I, I remember... Ron Hornaday driving out was I was driving in at the shop and Hornaday had tears in his eyes. I said, what's going on? He said, I just got fired. I said, now just wait a minute. And I went inside, saw Dale and, you know, I wasn't really at Dale's level or anything like that. But he said, just shut up. He said, I know what I'm doing. And we went to Daytona and sure enough, he knew what he was doing. So we go to Victory Lane and here comes Schrader. And I thought, well, Schrader and Mikey, you know, he always called him Mikey and I said, he's going to congratulate him. He grabs him like this and talks to him. Michael just, I mean, all the euphoria drained out of him. I mean, like that. Well, obviously, Kenny had seen the condition that Dale was in, and it was horrible. So we're like, oh, gosh. So Steve Peterson came and got me. He said, you have got to help us find Dale Jr. We've got to get him to the hospital. So I left Victor Lane. I was already out of Victor Lane, walking down Pitt Road when, when Steve got me and found Jr. And... Uh, he went over to the hospital and it's a done deal. We're tearing down engines. And, you know, we knew what was going on before Mike made the announcement. Dale came and got us. And Dale, Dale Jr. actually came and got us and took us in his, to his motorhome. And uh, he said, my dad's getting his first look at heaven. Hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean, it's, I'm chilled up here, you, you know. And I don't say that trying to tell somebody a secret. I say that out of respect for Dale Earnhardt Jr., who marched on. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of people in his position would have done that. A lot of people in the company couldn't do that. So NASCAR came over and said, you're through tearing down. Get out of here. It's because we're tearing down two cars, you know. And that was all the way to the crankshaft. And, uh, but they had already checked everything, but, yeah. you know. They said, just get out of here as quick as you can. Yes, sir. So we loaded our stuff and got out and got in the airplane. And uh, it was uh, three Delta Echo I was flying in. And uh, they said, just pull out. You know, the line was 50 airplanes long at that time, you know. And they said, just go to, go to this taxiway, go to this taxiway, go to the end of the runway. Tell us when you're ready to go. So they, I mean, they just got us out of there. And we all just went home like in a daze. You know, we, went, we just went to bed like... You know, like anything, your house burns to the ground, your kid dies, or whatever happens, you, you, you know, you, you don't really want to take that one in. When you woke up the next morning, it's like, man, this was real. And what was a real wake up was when you got to the shop the next morning. The mm. flowers and the wreaths and yeah. the people and yeah. the banners and the cardboard signs, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like, we're going to do. The good thing about NASCAR racing is you live by a schedule, they won't hold it up for you if you're not ready. And they're, and they're not, not going to do yeah. it early and sneak it by you. So your whole life is compartmentalized right. like it was at Petty Enterprises 50 years ago. And it, that was always a comfort to me. So we had racing. And then, uh, do we go to Rockingham next? Yes. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, everybody was holding up the three. And we won with Park at, at Rockingham. Rockingham. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah, that was pretty unreal. And then... And then it got, it was okay for a year or two, but there wasn't, when they came to put helicopter, or when they came with helicopters to put air conditioning units on top of Dale Jr.'s new shop at DEI, Earnhardt was up on the roof directing them. When the, when the, the big horses that Budweiser came to town on a, with on a truck that they gave to Earnhardt, Earnhardt told them how to feed them. When the fence was being built, 
Earnhardt was welding the fence up. You, you know what I mean? I, see your point. I, I see your you point. know, I, I remember one time we showed up at the airport and I got a group going to Daytona for winter testing. And Paul Andrews has a group going to Atlanta to the Lockheed Wind Tunnel. And I said, what plane are you taking? The King Air. I said, but we're taking the King Air. Yeah, can't do that. So, so we kind of worked it out where we took a skeleton crew and dropped them off in Atlanta and then went to Daytona and came back and got the rest of them, okay? So that's not the real story. Then when we got back, and we were gone two or three days, when we got back, Earnhardt, mail, yeah, come over here to my office. Okay, so I go over there, it's me, Tony Urie, because the eight cars who I was going with, Paul Andrews, a couple other guys. Yeah, this, and here's what we're going to do, here's how this is going to work out, that's going to, he said, but let me tell you something, Mail, right here in front of these guys, so they know. You don't ever change a schedule on my airplane. Those are my airplanes. Those are not your airplanes. Hmm. You're not me. So don't, don't even open your mouth in the office at the airport. I said, yes, sir, man, I'm sorry, but I was just trying to get everybody where they needed to go. I don't care. It's my airplane. Meal, okay, you guys, get out of here. Like, when you just get out of here. I, I turn, he goes, Meal, you stay here. You sit down right there. I said, well, I'm going to get another chewing. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, sir. I said, and he goes, hey. The way you did that airplane thing was perfect. We got everybody where they needed to get. He said, but I got to show them on the balls. I said, yes, sir, buddy. I'm with you. As long as I know it's a con, I'm good. And that, that's the biggest single thing I remember about Dale Earnhardt was he was a bad son of a gun, but, it, it, but he would come back and buy an ice cream cone, you know.